Can we all say amen? Glory to God. I cannot hear you say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we are welcome to daily teaching. Um, Image and Glory daily prayer and teaching meeting. Um, this is our third week of prayer. And we just have just this week and next week. So I want believing that the Lord will, will be able to utilize it well. Can we say amen? amen. I can hear you say amen. amen. Glory to God. So let's say the first epistle of John. The first epistle of John. Um, the Lord has brought us back there because he is not true with us. Can we say amen? The Lord is not true with us. First epistle of John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes and have handled and I've looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. So, like what our hands have handled of the word of life. So the handling there is the professing of life. Um, the handling there is the professing of life. And it, John was referring to the revelation of the life from the beginning. Can we say amen? amen? That which was from the beginning. So John was referring to everlasting life, um, which is the dominion of the Father and His Son, or the dominion, the everlasting dominion of God. Now, eternal life is twain. Eternal life is there is eternal life manifested in creation. And there, there is eternal life existed in the Godhead before time began. So they are different. What I mean they are different is one person but diverse manifestation. So everlasting life as is, an arm, is the flowing of eternal life into creation or into the dimension of creation or into time. So once eternal life flows into time, it becomes eternal life in creation. So we have eternal life before creation. Uh, then eternal life that created. Let me, let, me, let me differentiate both. We have eternal life before creation, which is the original life in the Godhead before time began. Can we say amen? amen. Nobody saying amen with me? Amen. Now, God has a fellowship of life in him before creation. So it's not creation that defines God. It is God's life that defines him. The Lord brought forth creation as a means of extending the revelation of his life to man. Okay, let's see John 1. Can we say amen? I just feel I should go back here again. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So this is the eternal class, or the eternal Godhead, that is made up of three beings. Eternal God, eternal Word, eternal Spirit. Eternal God, eternal word, eternal spirit, what you call the Godhead in their raw eternal state or eternal form. Okay? So in the beginning, was the word. John used was 
trying to describe the eternal past of the word. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word is the same with God, meaning eternal logos is the same thing with eternal God or eternal father. We can put him as father because we are trying to now identify them as persons. So what makes them the same is that they share the same quality of life. So that would say was wheat. When you say wheat, it means they are in the same category. They are in the same class. So the word is not inferior to the father in eternal life. You can we say amen? Yes. Or in the eternal Godhead. What you call the Godhead. I like the word the Godhead. There's a place like that in scripture. Romans 1, 20, 20. Eternal power and Godhead. So there's something called Godhead. God head. So this Godhead has three beings in their raw eternal state, which is the origin of all life. What did I say it is? I can't hear you say that. So, yes. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. God. Can we say amen? amen? So this is the beginning uh, before creation. So there is, a, there is, you know, God is a God of many beginnings. You cannot even count the, the beginnings in him. There are beginnings in their different seasons. By their nature, they are beginning beings. What did I say they are? The word beginning in scripture um, is the word arche. It means origin. So they are origin beings, meaning by nature they originate life. So, says, uh, so what is the origin of God? Have you ever seen people ask this kind of question? Uh, that's why he's God. Uh, can we say Amen. There are things concerning God that is abstracted from man in terms of understanding. I mean, if he does not let you know, you can't know. And that's why you are man. That's why you are created and he's uncreated. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? What did I say? So as long as you are created, you are limited. You are limited in sight. You can't know everything. Except they teach you. It's what they open to you. So there are some questions that cannot be answered because they are not light available to creation except God upgrades you. So, but a lot of, I believe that there are things that we will know. There are things that man will know, not all men. Men that partake of eternal life. When they come into eternal life, there are certain sites they will just know. There are things that that life will administer to them concerning Eh, in understanding. Can we say amen? I can't hear you say amen. amen. Just think about a goat trying to understand certain things. A goat trying to understand how man builds, man goes to space. It's far beyond him. He can't comprehend it. So imagine a goat where you say, oh. so all this man, he's all, he's, a, he's, a, he's all ujejari. Uh, he, he cannot comprehend the, that dimension of the activity of man's life. But that does not mean it does not exist. So there are, there are things that exist that are not yet made known to man. And they are very real in God. Can we all say amen? amen. I'm not hearing you say amen. amen. So verse 1 and 2 is describing the quality of life in the Godhead is a quality of life in the Godhead. Uh, so, in the, so the same was in the beginning with God. Now look at verse 2. So, um, all things were made by him. Now, 
when you see the activity of creation in place, it means God has moved from eternal life before creation to eternal life in creation. So that is what you call manifestation of life. What did I say you call it? All things were made by him. So before even God began creation, God made, appeared in time for creation. Anything creation, because, you know, time is an, time, space, and matter. They are expressions of creation. So God will have entered into those, into time to even begin eh, creation. Can we say amen? amen? Let's say the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before God made the heavens, God will have existed in a domain. Can we say amen? amen. So a, once a space has existed, eh, time has begun. Eh, once space exists, time began. So, so even before God brought forth the heavens and the earth, there was time. In the sense of, he had come into the realm of creation. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Hallelujah. I can't hear you say amen. amen. So as long as there is matter, there is time. And there is also space. So time, space, and matter existed before the heavens. They are earlier than the heavens. It is how God introduced himself to creation. Can we say amen? amen. God manifested into the domain called everlasting. When you say everlasting, it means creation. What did I say everlasting is? Yes. So that's why you see that creation is always tied to the everlasting God. Uh, it's because of God wanting to make himself known to man that he brought forth the domain called everlasting. So everlasting domain is the dominion of God in creation or in time. So, but I also called it, uh, it's also eternal life. It is just a condescension. It's the same God that uh, reduced himself into a dominion that he can be found. If God does not do that, nobody can meet God forever. God exists in a zone that man does not know of, man can never know of, man can never find by himself. Meanwhile, that zone that God existing originally is what eh, he wants to give man out of love. So if but he cannot give man that dominion until he creates a sphere where he can meet man. So everlasting, everlasting is the dominion of where an eternal God meets man. The everlasting sphere or the everlasting plane. If there's any word that, that. The everlasting plane is the dominion where the eternal God will meet man. So if the eternal God will meet man in the everlasting plane, it means he will condescend to an everlasting God. Eh? Which is called the creator. So but the eternal God is not, it does not create in the sense of create. The life that he has eh, did not create what we know as the heavens and the earth. That life is higher than creation. What did I say that life is? So, thank you. I think we are just trying to look at scripture just to support the thought. As thou, uh, as thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the hands of the earth. It's not just the creator of the hands of the earth. It's the creator of the heavens and the earth. So it was this everlasting God that created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created. So when you see creation attached to God, that's an everlasting father. Uh, can you say 
Can we say that? Can we say amen? amen? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was what? Without form and what? Void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So God brought forth creation for the purpose of revealing himself to man. So that revelation or the manifestation of eternal life. So eternal life before creation manifests in the dominion of men as eternal life in creation, which we call everlasting life. Is that clear? Uh, can, we, can we all say amen? amen? So all things were made by him, huh? and without him was not what? Anything made by the... So what it means is like, before God began creation, everything that was made, the prototype existed in everlasting logos. So all of the beings in the Godhead, if they have their eternal form, it means that they have the everlasting form. So it was not just the old Godhead were the ones that descended into everlasting or the everlasting plane for the purpose of creation. The three of them were involved when creation was going on. Remember in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says, let us create man. So there was an us. And it was not the angels. Can we say amen? God cannot create angels. And when he wants to make man, I say, let us with the angels. Sure you understand? So it was the, it was the, it was the everlasting beings. Now they're everlasting. They're eternal, but now they have come into an everlasting plane. They are now in their everlasting form. What did I say they are in? So we have everlasting logos. Now everlasting logos is the anti-time for all life, or for all creation. Amen. Everlasting Logos is the prototype. That's a better word. Everlasting Logos is the prototype for all creation. So, every form of life, both in heaven and the earth, derives its prototype from the everlasting world. So, it, the everlasting Father used the everlasting Logos for creation. So, it was as if the everlasting logos is the as the as the uh, it has the the prototype of how creation will look at every form. Can we say amen? The wisdom for created life is in him. That's what it means. All things were made because now scripture is referring to everlasting logos. In this John 1, can we say amen? amen. Are, are we interested in what I'm teaching? Yes, so scripture is referring to everlasting logos. So in him, eh, all things were made by him. What's happening? All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So look at that. Is that not powerful? So there's nothing that was made. There was nothing that was made without everlasting logos. Can we say amen? amen? There was nothing that was made without everlasting logos. So, all things in the heaven and earth have the original anti-type, or no, prototype in everlasting logos. All angels. So there is no angel in the present creation that did not derive their origin from everlasting logos. There is no creation in the earth of man. Both animals, the planetary bodies, that did not derive their origin from everlasting logos. All things. Everybody say all things. All things. All things were made by him. All things means all things. It means all things created. I'm not talking about what man made. God did not make her. Amen. So I'm not talking about all that. It's man that made car. Hallelujah. 
Car is the invention of man. So, but when I mean all things, he's talking about all things in heaven and on earth. Colossians 1, verse 16. All things in heaven and on earth. What did I say it is? You are not answering me, oh. I can't hear you. One more time. For by him all things, eh, by him were all things created. Referring to everlasting word. Because he was not son then, he was word. For by him were all things made. So look at it again. If it's by him, it means that uh, it was in him that the wisdom for creation was sourced from. For by him all things were created, things in heaven. So things in heaven is everything in the present heaven and things in the earth. Eh? Visible and what? Invisible. So, so there are visible things on earth. There are invisible things in heaven. There are even invisible things in the dominion of heads. Invisible for man. Currently, there are certain things that of the earth plane that you cannot see. You know that stars are, are earthly. And there are, there, there are stars that you, cannot, that you cannot see physically. Or the technology of man has not been able to journey to that point. Stars are still within the, the galaxies of man. Okay, so they are still within the jurisdiction of earth. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. And there are life forms on earth that you cannot see with your eyes. You need microscope to see it. But they exist. All those things existed. Huh? So there are different kinds of existence and forms of life. Believe me, the beauty of creation the beauty of this present heaven and earth, every of those things were sourced from each everlasting logos. So that's why I said by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and what? Invisible. Whether they be what? So these are now angels. Whether they be thrones or what? Or what? Uh, or, or what? All things were what? And what? So they were not just created by him. They were created what? So for his purpose. When they say for him, it means for his purpose. Eh? So creation was for the purpose. Remember that it was eternal, everlasting logos that was made flesh. So it was the, it was the sent one of the Godhead to bring the purpose of God, the Godhead or the message of the Godhead to creation. Or to man. Can we say amen? amen? I can hear you say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So let's go back to John. Are you seeing the wisdom here? So look at verse 4. So in him was life and what? So, so what life is this life? What life is this life? So now it says in him was life or it is what I call Eternal life in creation. I am using that deliberately because at times when you are reading the first epistle of John, you will see eternal life rendered there. Eh? But he's talking about everlasting life. He's, talk, he's talking about eternal life manifested to man. Can we say amen? I can't hear you say Amen. So in him was life. Can we all say that? He was life. Let's say that one more time. He was life. So what is the word made up for? What is the word made up of? So the word is a container of life. And what it contains, the molecules of his Person is life. So in him was life, and the life was the light of man. 
Can we all say that? Let's not be tired of these things. Let's say it again. Oh. So what was in Logos was supposed to be, was supposed to light men up. So these lights, so when you say amen, can we say amen? amen. So darkness is not blackness. Darkness is ignorance of life. Because there, in this point, we are not talking exactly of darkness in the, in the sense of devil or Satan. Uh, can we say amen? So there is an... So even though... Amen. I want to teach something now. God grant me words. Even though the first Adam... Uh, he was, he didn't have sin, but he was not immune to sin. But he still had darkness. So, but his darkness was not the darkness of sin. What did I say his darkness was? It was, he, he was his darkness was the ignorant of light. He was limited in his understanding. So, as long as you are limited in your understanding, there is darkness. Uh, just when you just take away light, there is darkness automatically. Darkness exists as a result of insufficient light. So, like I've said before, in a room you can have both light and darkness. If the light is not compelling enough to drive all the darkness away. So, darkness here is not just referring to evil. Can we say amen? It includes it, but I'm just, I'm looking at it from all sides. Darkness is the, is the absence of full comprehension of light. So in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So no, knowing fully that you cannot receive all the life in Logos at once. So you, re, you receive life as light. And you don't, since you can't receive life at once, it means you can't receive light also at once. Can we say amen? So darkness totally disappears when we, when light is full. Thank you. You are following me. Can we all say amen? amen. You now see the reason why we must come into full light. This is a blessed month. Can we say amen? Amen. Already season has come to November. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So the light, the life was the education for men. So, like I said, the eternal God condescended to an everlasting plane. So creation was, creation is an entity of the everlasting plane. What did I say creation is? So God's first men were everlasting men. There were men that could want interact with the manifestation of the light of Logos. In creation, there were men that could interact with the light of Logos in creation. So, and the light shined in darkness. Huh? Okay, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Can we say amen? Yeah. So, I'm just showing you that men here are the original men that God made. These were not flesh. These are Adams. Can we say amen? amen? They are Adams. They are sons that can interact with the everlasting God. They are sons that can interact with the everlasting God. It was when man fell that God had to condescend further into another region where he can save a fallen man. 
So men originally were not fallen. They were men that could understand God. What did I say they were? Or comprehend the light of the everlasting God. They could comprehend him. They could relate with him. They could walk with him. Such were the first types of men that walked on the earth. Even after Adam fell, you see, I had them for a while. For almost another 2,000 years after Adam. You see, I had such men that could relate with the everlasting God. Or relate with his light. Can we say amen? amen? That's why we are believing that Job was a Genesis man. You know, Moses was an Exodus man. No, Moses was a Genesis man that interfaced into Exodus. So even Moses was not an ordinary man. But after Moses, eh, men fell deeper. So you cannot compare Joshua to Moses in terms of stature. It was as if Moses closed, that, he closed the season. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Men that God could talk to face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Can we say amen? Yeah. They were everlasting men. It was not just only Moses. Huh? After Moses, the prophetic Keda condescended further. So there were prophets, and there were prophets. Moses was in a different kind of prophet. He was a prophet that was a son that could still comprehend the light of the everlasting God. If not, Moses cannot write Genesis. He cannot write Genesis. You need to be an Adam to write Genesis. Can we say amen? I can't hear your amen. amen. So you cannot wonder how all, all those men are Imagine who Abraham was. Because Moses was in a lesser order than Abraham. Their order, eh? that's how it is. Abel, Enoch, eh? Noah, Abraham. Then after Abraham, who? After Abraham, Isaac, no, his sons are in him. Then after Abraham, who again? Moses. That's how Hebrew rendered it. I, am I right? They, just, they were showing men in their different sonship stature in everlasting life. Everlasting life of the present earth. Eh? Men that could understand God. Amen. Yeah. Are, are you with me? God is restoring this order of men. Amen. I can tell you, even in a better way. Amen. So don't settle for less. Amen. These men were higher than science. People like Job, look at the level. Have you, have you read the book of Job before? Look at the lines that those men had. The way they were talking. So, Pastor, how did they know the heavens? How did they know the heavens? They knew the ordinance without science. What you call science eh, is a folly knowledge. So it means that man in his original light could understand the heavens. So when you know the everlasting God, you will know creation. You will understand star, moon. There will not be an issue. You understand the heavens. It's everlasting light that, that anatomize creation. Everlasting light, anatomized creation. You'll be able to understand the, you can excrete the present. In fact, you can excrete beyond the present, but you can excrete the present, you will understand it. That's why those men, Job, the friends of Job, they were playing with ordinances of the earth. <laughs> Talking about stars. Can you bind the sweet, you know, eh, influences of Pleiades? Eh? We don't even know what the Leviathan is. We are just assuming, some say, uh, probably it's a dragon. All those sea dragon. Probably have gone extinct. 
We don't know. So our current schooling is low. I'm not saying don't go to school. I'm only telling you that it's low. Uh, All these men, they are higher than Newton. Who is Newton around them? All those friends of Job that, if our Job even blessed them, eh? they were lesser in Job in understanding. Look at what they were playing with. Look at what Helio was playing with. All those things were everlasting wisdom of the present. They they were everlasting light of the present earth. Because angels have everlasting life of the present heaven. So, but when you have the everlasting light of the world to come, you can extract the present earth and heaven conveniently. Can we all say amen? Amen. I can't hear you say amen. Amen. Now let's go to 1 John. So that which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Verse 2. For life was manifested. So when you see manifestation, you know it's everlasting life. So this is manifested eternal life. What did I say it is? For life was what? Manifested. And we have what? Seen it. And we bear witness and show you that eternal life. So they say that eternal life. Does that eternal life is eternal life manifested in and through creation? That eternal life. So it's everlasting. That eternal life, which was what? With the Father and was what? So is, can we say amen? amen. Was the life, eh, life with the Father? Eh? and was manifested unto us. So, it was the old God there that condescended. So when they condescended from eh, the eternal Godhead, they condescended into eternal power. So, you know, we have eternal what? Power and Godhead. One is everlasting, the other is eternal. So they moved from eternal God there to eternal power. What did I say they did? So all of them are in everlasting domain. So the fellowship still continued. Can we say amen? So that eternal life, that was with the Father and was what? Manifested to us. So I like the way John put it. It means that they were already handling everlasting life. By the time John wrote this epistle, they were handling everlasting life. Eh? The word of life, which we have handled. What you have handled, you are professing. It's a profession. So this is it. The purpose of life is to profess life. What did I say is the purpose of life? God is not a... God is a a professor of life. God professes life. That's his nature. So the purpose of life is to for living. You need to understand this so that your perception to doctrine changes entirely. And that is the reason why they send light. They send light so that you can have life. What did I say? So you can have light without life because you have not engaged light. Even though what is in light is is life. It is light that begats life. Uh, So inside light are things of life. But the issue is that you must walk in light to 
eh, to come into life. Oh, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You may never walk in light and you will never come into life. That's in Isaiah 2. Oh, house of Jacob, come ye and let us what? Walk in. In the light. So, just like I can go to school and not learn anything. That does not mean that light was not available. The existence of schooling means there's light. Okay? So I can even attend school and not come, in, come out with anything. If I, many of us have even forgot what we learned. Because we are not professing it. It's easy to forget something you're not practicing. So you can now see. So that which we have seen and what? Uh, declare we unto you. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. That you may have what? Fellowship with us. You can see. So there are, I want you to see th three things, okay? Light, life, love. What did I say? Okay? So, I use it that way so that you can understand the journey. The journey begins with light. Hallelujah. But I say that you cannot even... Life, light itself does not exist outside life. The only reason why there's light is because life exists somewhere. Can we say amen? amen? So, why fellowship? It means that life is originally conscripted and missed a born a fellowship. If I let me tell you, uh, if you understand, every light has its own fellowship. What did I say? Our body. So we have fellowship of physicians, fellowship of engineers. Eh? I'm sure lawyers have their own. Town planners have their own. So what is that fellowship? They are the custodians of what? Of the lights. That's why they even keep it so much that if you try to associate with them without them approving you, or let me not say associate with them. You try to use their title. Eh? Their title is their authorization. Or let me use their title as their seal. Their title is their seal. If you try to use their seal without being identified with their fellowship, eh? They see you as false. Yes, Even if you were part of them before. But you, you did not finish. The system that seals you or authenticates you. Uh, maybe you are part of the learning and you were closer to the sealing or the authentication and one thing happens and then you were disapproved. That disapproval eh, is that you cannot use their seal. You cannot use their title. So somebody that fell, out, fell from medical school cannot call himself a doctor. Even if you fell from 600 level. He said, but I know everything. He said, I'm still a doctor you become a quack. So every institution have their seal. And I noticed that seals are attached to fellowships. There's a body that gives a seal. So 
So look at this verse very well. I just want you to see the, the design of truth in this epistle. So that which you have seen and heard, declare we unto you. So I like the word we. So it is the light eh, or the life was held by a we. The light is also conceived by what? A we. So you can see that the original desire of the custodians of the life is that a we eh, comes into the fellowship of that life. What did I say? Oh? So that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. So John was not speaking outside the fellowship. As a matter of fact, when you enter into bonding with the fellowship, you lose individual identity. You become a spokesman for the fellowship. Your life is taken over by the we. Can we say amen? amen? Oh, you people are not getting this thing. So when one is talking, all is talking. It's not, it's a, it's a mystery. It's a, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. So John is speaking on behalf of the fellowship. And he says, oh, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. So he's speaking on behalf of the Father and Son. So we are speaking when John is speaking. Oh, you are not talking to me. You are not responding very well. That's why I'm, I'm just concerned. So we are speaking. But we is really, really speaking. John. So, the more you get integrated into the fellowship, the more your life eh, becomes what? Taken over by the fellowship. So you don't own your life anymore. Can you now understand what brethren life is? When Peter came, Peter had revelation, went to, to minister to the Gentiles. When he came, his brethren put him, they set panel for him. The, the brethren said, come and defend what you did. Because Peter does not do any, even though, as I then, you know, because he had to act outside the permission of his brethren. Remember, they went to meet him in a different place. He was praying. An angel appeared to him. He was instructed. Even though an angel appeared to him. Or he had a vision rather. And an angel of God appeared to him. He still had to submit to the fellowship. So even personal revelations are submitted. Personal experiences are submitted. For the scrutiny of the fellowship. You still have to defend yourself. So after the, the, he now did that, the fellowship now approved it and said, oh, it was a genuine experience. So I'm, so I'm showing you the order of life that we are coming into. It's very strange to flesh. Can we say amen? Yeah. Very, very strange order of life. When you look at the association of the apostles from, Gen from Acts 1, Acts chapter 2, to the time the church scattered, it was only Peter that spoke. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was only Peter that spoke. That was the order. The Bible says, and Peter, Peter and the twelve. Uh, how did they put it? Uh, yes, and Peter standing up with the eleven. So, lifted up his voice. So, you know, you know, you know those men were dead men. Actually, they were sealed men. Oh, what did I say they were? Men. As at this time, all of them were sealed with Holy Ghost. Yes, they were not ordinary men. Jesus had already breathed into them. Received the Holy Ghost. That was before Acts. Acts chapter 2. They had received the Holy Ghost. What they received was sealing. Sealing to operate as apostles. Eh? In the measure of the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus breathed into them. Eh? The Bible says he... He breathed, then he had, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So this was different from Acts chapter 2. So 
So this breath was breath eh, to seal a work that Jesus had done. Are, are, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Amen. I, I can't shout tonight. I'm just so I want. I hope you are following me. Yes, sir. So you can see. So Peter and the eleven, and none of them kept quiet. Yes, sir. Only one person spoke. Yes, Someone was not burning with zeal. <laughs> and Peter, standing up with the eleven, eh, lifted up his voice and said unto them. So it was his voice, but it was their voice. Yes, sir. So this was the mysterion eh, that Jesus committed the church to. Church committed the project of Ecclesia to. They were a mystery. It was a mysterious company. Those 12. Jesus raised them and brought them into a fellowship of life. Can we say amen? amen? The word fellowship means that life lived amongst some categories of people. So when life is shared, it's love. When life is shared, it's called love. So love is the demonstration or the sharing of life amidst the fellowship. Love in the context here, yeah, the love of the Father and Son is the life shared amidst the Father and the Son, the fellowship of the Father and Son. So if you are in that fellowship, you will also share of that love. Can we all say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Glory to God. So, uh -huh, look at that. So, that which we have seen, and, and we what? Declare to you. He kept, he, you know, John kept using we. This is a very fearful thing. I said, God will open our understanding. Yeah. I lost her. Even me, I don't even understand this thing fully. John kept using we. We, we, we. Look at it. Now, as at the time, technically, the we, he was not referring to any physical person. In the sense of, because as at this time John was writing, all the apostles, all of his own class of apostles were not physically alive. As at the time he was writing this epistle, this epistle has, was around AD 90 to AD 95. Around that time, Paul had gone, all the apostles had gone. Every single of the, of the leading apostles were not alive. So all the people that were alive were his children, far, far, far. You see, he was calling them my little children. The fathers were people that were, that began the faith and Acts chapter 2 and that were still alive. Those were the fathers that had journeyed for years. So technically, all of these people are his sons. Technically, it was the only, eh, Legacy apostle alive. So I'm saying that that we was not, he was not talking to Peter, he was not talking about Peter. He was not talking about James. Uh, so we, who are the we? So that which you have seen and heard, declare we unto you. That ye also may have fellowship, what? So the intention is that they wanted to bring that old church into what? Their fellowship. Can we say amen? amen? So the end of light is fellowship. So what did I say is the end of light? So it means that how do you judge increase in light? Uh, that's the only way. Because if the end is fellowship, it means that journey to the end must be progressive fellowship. Huh? So, that whole church must be brought into fellowship. That whole church must be brought into fellowship. They had not been fully inducted in the fellowship. What you call induction? They do it for doctors. 
It is the day they induct you that you enter into the fellowship per se. Am I right? West African College of Fawas. Fawax. F Fawax. I be Fawax. I don't know what they call it. Can we say amen? So when they induct you, you now enter into the fellowship. So John wanted to induct churches. It was not even one church. It was a church of churches. Because it was a church of fathers. It was a church of young men. It was a church of little children in different stratas. So there were churches. So the plan was that he wanted to induct churches in what? Into the fellowship of the father and the son. So this is the highest fellowship in creation. This is the fellowship you must enter into before you, before you go to heaven. Can we all say amen? It's the highest fellowship in creation. So that which you have seen and heard, declare we unto you. Oh, so this, this, these are languages of the fellowship. Uh, as at this time, you don't even live for yourself anymore. That ye uh, also may want, may have want, fellowship with us. So, uh, and truly, and truly our fellowship is with what? And what? It's with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? Yes. So, these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Okay? These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have what? Heard of Him. So, that is talking about that eternal life. That him there is that eternal life. So Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, is the declarer of the Father's light. We know that the Son of God is come. It's in chapter 5. So the him that they heard from is the Son. So what is the Son declaring? God. Well, which is the Father. The Son of God is also the high priest of good things to come. What did I say the Son of God is? You are not talking to me. Oh. So we know that the Son of God is come. Look at that. Uh, the Son of God is come. Uh, and had given us what? An understanding that we know Him that is true. And we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, comma, and want. So, go back to 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. So, when you are here, please don't be rushing. Eh? We need to be very patient with them. So, this then is the message you have heard of him. So, who is that him? He's the son of God. No, he's the son of God that they heard the message from. It is a son that will teach the father. So it's only the son of God that can declare the father. Amen. Are you getting it? So this is then the message you have heard of him. So it's the son of God that began to open a new economy eh, of the life from the beginning. The life from the beginning. Can we say amen? amen? So this is then the message you have heard of him and declare unto you, God is light. And in him there is no what? Take me to John 1 verse 5. It's the same thing. Ironically, it's not even the same verse. It's the same thing. God is light. It's the same thing as, and the light shineth in darkness. Eh? And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness converted it not. 
So in him was what? Life. And the life was the what? Light of man. So this is the message to creation. This is really the message to creation. Can we say, what did I say? This is it. So this is then the message you have heard of him and declare unto you. So to even declare this message unto you, you must be Zion. Zion is a company of people that have joined in from flesh to stone. So if you are flesh, they can't declare this message to you. You must be have turned from flesh to spirit or you are stone. You are no longer a reed shaken by the wind. You have become a stone church. It takes a stone church for them to declare the message to. Can we say amen? I can't hear you say amen. amen. Take me to that, Peter. You are right. Let's look at all scripture. I said, this is your season of understanding. Yeah. Nobody should leave this season and, and say, I do understand. I mean, huh? to whom coming as unto a living stone. So living stone is appearing to lively stone. They are not the same thing. Huh? Can we say Amen. Start from verse 1, 2 Peter chapter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all kind and all hypocrisies and all envies and all want. So these are things that Lively Stones Church must lay aside. These are not, these are still sins of the sanctuary. They are all sins of the sanctuary. All these things you are seeing, they are sanctuary sins. What did I say they are? What I mean saying, when you are transiting from the holy place, there are things that you must have lay aside fully. Now, I need to let you know that it is the Father that administers the operations in the holy place also. That's why when Paul wanted to move the church from milk to Christ, he prayed to the Father of glory. So even the activity in the tabernacle is the father that is the, it is, is the supervisor via the seven spirits. So nobody can enter into the court without the father's permission. Hey, what did I say? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Having end of your faith in the Lord Jesus. And what? Your love, what? Uh, love for us, they cease not to what? Give thanks for you, making mention of you where? That who? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he talked about two of them. This is the living and true God. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ is the true God. The Father of glory is the living Father. This is the living and true God. So he has to appeal to all sides of the everlasting God to, for them to come into, uh, into the sanctuary. Can we say amen? amen? I can't hear you say amen. amen. It's even into the courts. It's not even to the sanctuary. It's to the courts because they were transiting from milk to Christ. And Christ begins... Eh? From the outer courts. That's if you are using the tabernacle. Amen. So I've already lost some people and I don't like it. Amen. I, don't, I think some people are, don't take these things serious. Eh? If you don't, if these things are not part of your life, you can't, you can't stroll into this assembly and you're not a serious person. Eh? I'm telling you, you would be doing yourself. So I, I sense that some of us, we don't prepare before we come. Even my wife reads her notes before she comes for a meeting. Mommy, she goes through her notes. Every morning, she goes through her notes, listens to tape, reads transcripts. So if she can be like that, no, nobody must have an excuse. I say some people are pulling me back. Eh? Because you are, not, you, are not, you are not, I don't know what you are using your life to do. Yes, I just, I just felt that, that, that rebuke for my spirit that some are, you are still dull of hearing. You shouldn't be dull of hearing by this time. I am telling you. You know that we are continuing from last year. Are you aware? 
Aha. Uh -huh. So if you did not follow us last year, sir, and you did not journey well this year, you'll be lost. Hallelujah. So, the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Father there is the Lord Almighty. The God there is the true God. The Lord Almighty is also the living God. So those, you can see, so it is the Father, Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. When you see comma, it, it's just to, is to, is to qualify that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, comma, the Father of glory, comma. So it's the same person, but in what? In manifestation. So the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's the true God. The Father of glory eh, is the living God. Can we say amen? amen. I hope you are getting this. So it is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that administers any soul that enters the tabernacle. So you cannot enter, now of course you know it's the outer court in the tabernacle, but it's the inner court in the temple. So you can see. He is the one that supervises entrance or coming. What did I say he supervises? Because this is coming to worship. You need to appeal to him. He is the color of commerce. What did I say? It is the father desires such. John 4. The father desires true worshippers. So who are true worshippers? Those that are worshipping in the most holy. But you cannot reach their place without starting from the outer courts. The outer court is the inner court in the temple. Now the other comment, and now is, when through worshippers, through, if it's through, it means it's in a true tabernacle. Yes. That's the most holy. That's the purpose of the true tabernacle, is to make you true. So you can be worshipping, but you are not yet a true worshipper. So if you are, any journey through the course is worship. What did I say? So, worship begins, Pastor CG, when you begin eh, at the outer court. When you start, service starts. When you enter, so there are courts of service. Eh? So, but service becomes true in the true tabernacle. So, where did I want to bring those churches into? Into true worship. So, you see, so all those churches were already worshipping. Amen. Amen. What did I say those churches were doing? They were already worshippers. So, but they want to upgrade their worship. Eh? And bring them into what? True worship. To perfect their worship. So, to perfect their worship, uh, is to seal their worship. To seal their worship is to administer the Father's name. Uh, which is a sign that they can now worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, look at that. The Father, but the hour has come and now is when the Father, when through worshippers shall worship the Father in what? <laughs> can see that spirit is smallest. Eh? Can we say amen? amen? And in the, in truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, you need, you need these two things for worship to be complete. You need spirit and in truth. What did I say you need? Actually, it is two, but it's also three. It is spirit, word, eh, water, and blood. It's those three that you need for worship. For what, or the cycle of worship to be completed. It is, is spirit, 
water, and blood. Uh, there are three that bear witness in the earth. That earth means uh, worship in creation. Because verse 7 says there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. He didn't say the Father and the Son. He used the Word deliberately. So that is talking about the eternal. Everlasting life is like an earth to eternal life. Huh? Amen. Amen. What did I say everlasting life is? So if I said there are three that bear one record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, then the next thing he said, because the purpose of record in heaven is to bear witness where? On earth. Huh? So, he says, and there are three that bear witness in earth. So it's not just even talking about in, it's talking about in men. Yes, sir. Everlasting men. Yes. So the head of God is everlasting life. Huh? The head of the eternal God is everlasting life. Eh? If eternal God is going to come into the, his head is everlasting life. And there are three that bear witness in at. Can we say amen? amen? Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. So the play, when the everlasting God is coming out of his heaven, the earth will first land in his everlasting life. Or that earth means manifestation or appearance. He's appearing into visibility. So where is coming first to? Eh? Is everlasting life. So everlasting life is the earth of eternal life. Amen. I hope I'm not confusing you. So there are three that bear with us. So for worship to be complete in earth, you need those three things. Spirit, water, and blood. So water and blood is truth. So truth is twain. Truth is not complete with water only. Uh, it has to be water and what? Blood. So the Father seeketh such uh, to worship him. So this is the true God. So if you want to worship the true God completely, uh, you will have his seal. I like the word so, those that have a seal are the true worshippers. What did I say? What did I say? So, to worship him, you must have a seal to be a true worshipper of God, which is the true God. So God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So worship begins eh, at the first court. Worship is perfected at the last court. So you can see, he's the father of glory. He's the God of our Lord Jesus Christ that administer seven spirits. Eh? So seven spirits, they have their activity in the courts. So both the sanctuary and the outer courts, there is an activity that goes on there. Can we say amen? Uh, let me use the word. It's better you use the temple. Because the temple is a better... Yes. Can we all say amen? amen? Because in the temple, you have an altar court. In fact, you have altar courts. They call them courts of the Gentiles. Uh, then you now have inner courts. Then you have the sanctuary. 
then you have the mustoli. So the courts, eh, it is the is a journey of worship. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? I can't hear you say amen. amen. Are you with me? Yes, so la, let's go back to John. No, not first John. I don't want to lose a thought that. So look at that. So this is then the message you have heard of him and declare unto you. So the you there, they are, I believe that there are people there in that church. They are journeying beyond the, the stone formation of Zion. Uh, which First Peter described in First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, so wherefore laying aside all malice, all guile, and all hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings. Now the veil that parts the holy place and the most holy is actually the Father. So the Father, the altar of incense is the beginning of fatherhood. What did I say? So it is the, the Father, you can, if you can get me the board, the Father faces this, faces when you, are, when you get to the end of the holy place, who you stand before is the Father. It's the face of the Father that faces the holy place. And there's a face of the Father that begins the most holy. So, it is the Father. So, just look at my palm here. So, let's say this is the holy place. This is the most holy. It is the Father that faces this place. It is the Father that begins this place. So this father that faces this place is the father that refines. Malachi chapter 3 is the one that sits as a refiner's fire. Huh? This purpose is to bring people here. Huh? Are, are we here? Now the interesting thing is that you cannot even even you cannot be brought into the Mostoli without the Father. So, you begin everlasting light uh, even before the veil. I don't know how I can describe it. You know, it's not like you get to the veil. No, it is the Father. Uh, uh -huh. So, by the time you are perfecting the season of Christ, you are just, you are also moving into the season of everlasting light. So the Father will now begin you immediately with his milk. Can we say amen? He will begin you with his milk. Because by the time you look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. You're already purified. Eh? But you need now, you now need fervent charity. That fervent charity is of the Father. It's for you to journey through the veil. It's almost like it's an excited form. For you to boom eh, into the veil, you need an energy that the Father gives. So the Father will energize sons of the sanctuary. Can we say amen? amen? For them to leap into the true tabernacle. Yes, sir. Ah, can we say amen? amen? Let me repeat that again. So the Father will energize. So the Father's light yes, sir. begins as milk. Yes, sir. Can we say amen? amen? Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto the offend love of the brethren. See then that you love one another with what? So all of them, you must have pure heart. Uh, pure heart means you have been purified. Uh, with a pure heart, fervently. You will love with pure heart. Then you, you know, it's as if they just moved into fervent love. But before you even begin to use pure heart, you will have used, you'll be loving. They say, what they actually mean is that use pure heart to love. Then use pure heart to not love what? Fervently. Yes, 
So being born again. Uh, so it is the Father's light that creates the season of that birth. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. So the reason I'm saying that so that you can understand that um, you need the Father's light also for a transition from the sanctuary uh, into the most holy. If I is the Father that selects those that we go. He's the one that will select those that will move into the most holy. He will select them. He will sit as with a refiner's fire. Or let me use it in a better way. It is the high priest using the Father's light. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Now, the high priest can minister as a priest in the sanctuary. The high priest can also minister as an high priest in the sanctuary. So, there is a ministration that is priestly in the sanctuary. That's Christ's ministration. Can we say amen? amen. But after you have been separated by the light of Christ, then the high priest will not begin with a higher light. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To now begin the activity. So the activity starts at the veil. That's what I'm saying. The most holy light starts at the veil. It's, it's, it begins there. I'm going to use that first Peter chapter 2 to describe it very well. Can we say amen? amen. That's why I believe that the Father's light is coming right now. It means that there are already some songs of the sanctuary that are ready for everlasting life. Yes. The light does not come if there are no those ready for it. So as at around five years ago, when we began this teaching, we already have sanctuary sons. Those that are ready to journey beyond the veil. They don't just talk. Eh? So the high priest has been coming since then. Oh, nobody's answering me. Amen. Do you believe that? <laughs> you think we're just playing? We're not playing, no. Many have not yet moved, but some have moved. Some have moved in their comprehension of God. Some are the, some are the early forms of the most holy. The beginning. And some probably have even joined the Father in the Father's land. Because you will journey a little bit in the Father's land before you get your plot. Then after you get your plot, then you now start building your house. But there's the first arriving in the land. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. It's good to know because maybe some people think that we are playing. We are not playing, no. There's no play. There's reality. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't deny things that God has done in me because I'm trying to be humble. I know what God has done. I know some things that heaven has helped me to know concerning life. Uh, I'm believing God. I know I still have a long journey, but I know things God has done. I know it. I cannot deny that. So that's why I said that. Some have. Can we all say amen? I'll just, I'll just teach. Hallelujah. So, like, so wherefore, laying aside all malice, so they are talking to lively stones. Who are they talking to? Lay aside all malice, all guile, all what? Oh. So, so, amen. You have to lay aside all. You may have laid aside some, because now the living light is coming. So, by, so they are telling you that you have to lay aside. Huh? Can we say amen? amen? You know, at times when you see King James, you know, now what, as new babes desire the sincere milk. Actually, what did he say? As new babes, you're already drinking the milk. Yeah. Can we say amen? amen? No, you should desire it. But once you're a babe, yeah, so you have already started it. So it is actually that milk that. Eh? empowers you to lay down all. Amen. 
It's the father's light. But it's his father's light at milk form. Can we say amen? amen. Uh, so you can be a Zionite and you have not laid down all. So some of us, we have, we have made some progress, but we have not laid down all malice. You have laid down some malice. You are spiritual, but you have not, you still have, you still have some malice, some guile, some hypocrisy. Uh, love is not totally without dissimulation. Uh, and then you still have some envies. Some. In fact, some of those envies, they may be, they may be higher envies. They might not be envies because these are spiritual people. So the people don't, they don't envy car. They don't envy, aha, thank you. It may be envies in the order of spiritual things. But it's still envy. So some have crossed the, maybe you are envying your sister because she wants to marry. You are still flesh. If that's the, you are still flesh. But a time will come when that is not your envy. You may, it's not envy rank. Maybe you envy the rank of your brother. Yes, sir. You see, so those are envies of spiritual men. Yes, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Or you envy someone that has understanding more. Yes. More than you. You have understanding, no? <laughs> you have understanding, but somebody has it more. So you envy. So that's where the envy is. It's still envy. The high priest sees it as envy. So he has to what? He has to purge. Because, oh, there must be none crossing. None of those things must be there. Uh, that is me. That's how I see it. You know, I don't know all things. But I think it's the Father's milk. Uh, the Father's milk is the transition from Christ to everlasting life. The Father's milk is actually everlasting life. But it's transition. So you end time to the Father's milk through his milk. Can we all say amen? amen. So when for laying aside all malice, all uh -huh. as you born babes, is that the sincere milk of the word that you may agree? If so, you have tasted that the Lord is good. So, so you have tasted. It's a tasting. They call it taste. It's not like you are not feeding. I like the word taste. The purpose of taste is so that you take more. So it is to these babes that to whom coming as unto wants. A living. This is not lively. Living. This is the living God. This is now the living God. Can we say amen? amen. Or the Father. So to whom come as unto this disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and what? Precious. Ye also as lively stones. So all the commandment in First Peter chapter 2 is to secure you as a full lively stones. So you have lively stones. Then you have a full lively stones. A full lively stones is a church where all, none of those things are existent at all. So I remember that was the word the Lord gave me this year. The Lord says that become a full lively stones church. Can we say Amen. amen. Uh -huh. So, the Lord does not want to see all those things in our midst. That's what it means. And malice, envy. Uh, look at that, look at that. I'm not even talking about works of the flesh now. We should join in beyond what, You are still fornicating. No, 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 no. Eh? What you want to do is to sleep with a sister. You are far from what I'm talking about. That is not what I'm talking about. We must come to a point where that one is not seen at all. Amen. That we have washed, that is dealing with the flesh. When you take word enough, it's not like you'll not be tempted, but you have more power to put it under. Yes, so even when the thought comes, it, it is, when you see the thought, you just arrest it. You disarm it easily. You think that they don't interface some of those thoughts to us. They do. But you just get it because you have sufficient power. So you get it and oh. I love my sister. I don't sleep with my sister. That's all. You, you, you take a power. Understand? You disarm the thoughts. The reason why you are still captivated by love is that you are weak. You are weaker than the temptation. So what they need to do is to strengthen you. 
First, with what? Understanding. You see through it. Eh? So at times, a, a thought will come to you, but it cannot pollute you. Because you have a stronger, you have a stronger armor. So you just handle it, you just laugh and just, you just shield it up. Boom. That's how you shield up. You know the way white pack, when rain is falling, poop, poop, poop. So there are some thoughts that will follow your skin. Your wiper will just clean it off. Yeah. Clean off. Lost. Clean off. So when you see a lady, the first impression I think is not to sleep with her. Now the thought can come to you, but your wiper is stronger. So when they come, boom, and you just see, the Lord can even imply you just see the beauty of God in it, the person. So they have done a lot of work of Purification of the heart. The heart is now pure. A pure heart thinks pure things. Amen. So even when impure thoughts come, they don't land. Now, the, the, how you know that something is your thoughts or is the devil's thought? Is does he land? So a thought can come eh, from external. It does not rest on you because you have sufficient antivirus to disarm it. But if it lands and now begins to now play out, eh, eh, this, are, this is the purpose of a thought. When they throw a thought to you, they want the thought to land and move from a thought to a meditation. What did I say? God is helping us. What did I say? What is a meditation? What you are pondering on. So, the thing is a thought, but I can take it off. The thought to do evil to a brother can come and I'll put it off. No, no, no. My law will constrain me. So I will not do it. But when the thing goes beyond thought and I begins to meditate upon it, eh, it begins to distill from light to life. It just needs my, my engaging. It begins to distill. Then it can now go beyond thought to attitude. I'm showing you how at times we carry out things. Can we all say amen? amen? So at times, see, God will show you mercy before the thing becomes your life fully. A message will come to interact it, to intercept it, so that it does not become settled fully eh, as a practice for you. That's why it's always good to be in a very good world environment. Because when you're in a good world environment, the word of God is just, it's like misery. It's boom, 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 boom. As the word is going, boom, boom, spirits. And the Holy Ghost knows. So that's why at times the Holy Ghost will stand on the ministry and be releasing word at several levels. It's like guided missile. They are factoring sins. Or some of those things that are activity of sin in the heart of people. So at times when those words are going on, they are just disarming them. So when you hit the word, you are, you are, you are readjusted. You can now receive strength. Eh, and break the cycle on the chain of a thought that wants to act itself fully as sin. So when you are struggling with a thought, for instance, a thought of fornication, when you expose yourself to so much light, it will disarm it. If, then if you are sincere, eh, if you are sincere enough, you can just go to the place of light and keep strengthening yourself. Can we say amen? Don't yield to that Open up to people that can help you. If you conceive darkness, darkness gets stronger. That's why some of us don't mind. When, when you're not accountable, you're not wise. Eh? So, but when you open it up, the thing weakens. Then you can now receive strength to begin to what? Eh? Receive a non spiritual strength to wrestle it and then subdue it. A season can come when what you are doing is wrestling. Another season, when you come, what they are doing is that you have disempowered it. God will say, Amen. I said, The Lord is strengthening you. So nobody should give up to defeat. Uh, don't give up to defeat. Uh, and don't strengthen a nature that God wants to deal with. If you have a problem with impure thoughts, you should not go around some things that can further strengthen it.
Because some of us are really not wise. We play with things that we should not be playing with. You know yourself. You know what triggers you. Run away from it. If you are triggered, eh? some of us, we are easily triggered when we see certain scenes. Don't be going around social media. You don't need social media in your life. You reduce your social media. Eh? Can we say amen? You need spirit media. That's what you need in your life. Social media look bad every day, sir. Don't just you know, you know, you should know some of those things. So, we we'll even need wisdom to know what to interact with for time. Amen. The purpose of light is for you to see. You must hate sin. You see, if you have not hated a sin, you can't break away from it. So, why light comes for you? See the thing how ugly it is. Eh? The only reason why you are tempted to fornicate is because you have not hated it. You have not seen what it is. Can you sleep with a woman that has HIV? Hello? The thing is catching you. Pastor, I can't help myself. As I am now, I feel like fornicating. So, and the, and the, eh? an, an HIV person appears before. If I wanted to sleep with the person, until the person said, I want to break a news to you. I said, I have HIV. So that's why you know that lost is a force. Just the knowledge of I have HIV, that thing, that thing, listen, that force that is, that is holding you, that is like you cannot think, all of a sudden begins to weaken. Can we say amen? Well, nobody saying amen. amen. Just one knowledge, just disarm it. So but God wants to give you something beyond that. You will, see, you, will see, you will see the spirit, what it is. You see, the spirit behind fornication is very ugly. If you, if you see the spirit, what light a lie, you will not do it in your life. The day you see the demon that is behind fornication, if you see that spirit, one day, one day you can't continue in it. You will zip up your trouser. They are so idiot, so smelling. Eh? Eh? You, they are... They are, think about the most ugly being on the earth. They are not as ugly as those spirits. They are terribly ugly. If you see them, if you see them, you will. <laughs> but you don't, they don't, the day you see them is the day you are free. Yes, Hallelujah. I can't hear you say amen. amen. It's the same thing with, with all those things. Bitterness, unforgiveness. It's the same thing. When you see the oppression behind it, you will see it. You will not fall away. You will not fall again into their prey. You can understand. Uh, so that's why light is very crucial. Light is actually deliverance. Uh, what did I say light is? Sometimes I look at the times that God has given me light concerning something. I just look at the things I used to do before I just laugh. I'm laughing at myself, but I'm free. It's a, it's a laughter. It's a joyous laughter. I'll just be laughing with myself. So this thing helped me bounce from years ago. I, just, I can see through it. Just following light and green. Just see through oh, it. This thing was very dirty. So to won't come in as unto a live living stone. Uh, so it's coming, to, the living stone is coming to lively stones. Can we say amen? amen. The way, I like the way King James, you know, some other translations will put it as the same thing. But I like the way it is. Uh, you know? So they are lively stones. They have become a spiritual house. So to become a full spiritual house, all those sins, of the sanctuary must be dealt with. A full spiritual house. So you cannot even become a full spiritual house without the Father's light. The milk of the Father is like the beginning of His light. Can we say amen? It's to complete the spiritual house formation. The way the Lord taught me is that they said those seasons intersect into one another. So the Father's season intersects into the sanctuary. That is why His face fails 
faces this place, you can see. This is the father facing the sanctuary. The father is also facing the true tabernacle. So ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. And only priesthood to what? To offer what? Spiritual sacrifices. Accepted to, accepted to God by what? By Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. Can we all say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So this then is a message what we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. What did I say? Aha, uh -huh. so this is the so this is the is actually the life that they want to give them. They want to give them everlasting life. But everlasting life must be, be communicated through light. Uh, understanding. So light there is the understanding of the Father. Uh -huh. So the Son of God is coming to give understanding. He is the one that begins to give understanding. The entrance of your word give it what? And understanding. The entrance of what? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That's what I wanted to say. The entrance of their word give it what? It give it what? So when the, when the word begins to give understanding, it's giving life. Give me understanding, I shall live. So what is understanding? It is light plus walk. You come into understanding by yielding to light. You must engage light. If light comes and it does not make contact with faith, there is no understanding. Can we say amen? amen. That's Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Eh? That's why they were dealing with unbelief in the Hebrew church because they were losing faith. Look at that. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not want profit them. So light will not profit you eh? when you don't want. It does not mix with faith. So word plus faith, eh? that word is light. It is light plus faith that equals life. The word must mix with faith. And that's always our problem. Satan assaults the heart. So a lot of people can hear and they don't believe. Somebody can be hearing this one and they still believe God tower. Pastor, everlasting light. And honestly, I'm li I'm, I won't lie to you. It's just that, we, you know, we don't see our heart. But somebody inside, that is his understanding. That kind of person needs sufficient, consistent light to break that stronghold. Can we say amen? amen? You live in your understanding. Your understanding is an habitation. That's why it's not easy to take it away. To break away understanding is to demolish your house. <laughs> it is what you lean on. What you lean on is a strength. So your understanding is a strength that you lean on. So <laughs> you need to demolish somebody's understanding. Is to demolish the way where he hides, where he lives, where you are confident in. Any small thing you enter, you understand it. <laughs> Any small pleasure. It's just like the, the shell of a snail. That is the understanding of the snail. Anytime there's pleasure, just enter, you understand it. Eh? So, so, for instance, when you want to live life of the brethren and you get, listen, listen, are you with me? Yes, sir. And you get opposition, you enter into your understanding. What is your understanding? No grief for anybody. Uh, That's your understanding. So, but you want to really live brethren life. But you will face opposition because Satan is not going to make it easy. If you are going to walk in the life, you have to, you, you have to, you have to consistently begin, believe against your understanding. Now, anytime you face opposition, do you, do you always know that it is your understanding that is, your understanding is wanting to call you back? 
Come back, come back, come back. Kosai, kosolombe. Kosolombe, kosolombe. Eh? You have believed God. You have believed what daddy is saying. I believe God. I want to walk in this understanding. So when you begin to walk, you face opposition. And you say, I believe, I believe. And you want to leave, you say, we poor. Then your understanding begins to call you. Allah Benny. <laughs> Man of God. Spiritual son. Uh, be more soft when this understanding is not for you. My boy. Uh, come to your house. Your, what, is, what is your house? Your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. And, uh, with all your, and lean not on your understanding. So your understanding is what you trust in. What you lean on is what you want. Trust in. It's your house where you live. So at times, when there is preaching going on, people are living in their understanding. <laughs> Pastor is just talking. <laughs> Everlasting life! People are in their understanding. And, and some are just peeping, eh? Check this out, huh? They enter their understanding back. Have you finished? So somebody can even come to church with what? His understanding. His understanding is his hammer. So on your understanding at times can even be deflecting message. <laughs> it's like a force feed. Take me to evil three. That's why it says, today if you hear his voice. What do you think makes people add in their hands? Is their understanding. So I can be in this way and say, ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, I'm in a new level right now. Um, all these things people are teaching, I'm in it. I'm it already, hallelujah. Oh, yes, talk about Father's, I'm in the Father's love. Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, my <dear>. understanding. <laughs> so, um, you can, let me just come and fellowship with you. Let me build your order. I condescend to your, to your level. And that thing is real to the person. Very real. It's very real. That understanding is real to him. So an understanding can be a delusion. A, a delusional. Completely. <laughs> So wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you hear his voice, adding what? You are not responding to me. Oh. Now, what is adding your heart? You know the voice, but you don't like it. So your understanding can, can tell you that don't listen to that voice. No grief for anybody. No grief for anybody. That is your understanding. Your understanding will keep teaching you to harden yourself. So your understanding can fortify you against the voice of the Son of God. This voice is the voice of the Son of God that is come. Uh, your understanding can train the heart and harden it. What does it mean to harden it? Eh? This is a negative stone. Because the Son of God speaks to stones. But there is a stone that is against stone. This is a negative stone that is it is hardened against... Lively stones are stones that respond to the Son of God. So this one is unbelief stones. They are hardened against the voice of the Son of God. This is the worst enemy of Zion. What did I say it is? This is the enemy. Let me tell you why it's worse. You see, it is not a sin outside the Zion complaint. It is those that are here in understanding that this enemy eh, works with very well. It's very around them. Very much around them. It teaches them how not to respond. Don't respond. That's the only way it can eh, immune you to the voice. Because you regularly interface the voice. But you can also regularly add in your heart against it. So somebody can be coming for five years. Yes, and it's stronger than the voice. So if you so in an atmosphere where people are changing, some people will be hardened. You'll not be wondering that 
God, what is happening? You know what I'm saying? Some people are changing, they're becoming better. Some people are now added. It is this, it's this oppression. It's unbelief. Actually, you know, unbelief is actually signature that the enemy, what? The enemy cultures inside you. I don't know, I just, I don't know how I found myself in Hebrews. So, no, go back. Let me just do Hebrews. I don't want to take, this already, let me just round up here. We'll continue tomorrow. Can we say amen? amen. Ah, your amen is standing on one leg. Amen. So, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the day, what? As in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. So, there were wilderness church crossing into the land of promise. So, most, he was referring to the church in the wilderness. Okay? Now, look at verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, they, they do always what? In what? And they have not known my ways. They are still not known my ways. So I swear in my rod that they will not enter my rest. Take it, brethren, lest there be what? In any of you. And what? In departing from? So, in departing from the veil. So, they were already before the veil. So, they want to now start going back like this. Uh, so, the heart is being adding against it. So, these are not, these are, this is a company of, this is a company of Christ. You, not, you start loading the meal. In departing from the living God. So these guys didn't want to go on anymore. They were already tired. They started, it, it, how, now it happens to me, number one, you start disdaining the ministers. It begins like that because they carry the word. You don't, when you, when you start losing value for ministers, it's not because of anything. You are losing value for what they carry. It's the truth. The only reason why you honor Pastor Friday is because you honor the word. The day you lose respect for the word, that, the, that honor goes to the trash can immediately. The honor goes into the trash can immediately. Once you lose honor and value for what he carries, that is the end. It becomes like any other person to you. Yeah. That's what Paul was telling them in Hebrews 10. He said before they could remove their eyes. Yeah. And they allowed their goods to be spoiled. That was in Galatians. In Hebrew, he said they could allow their worldly goods to be spoiled. Uh, but later on, Satan actually assaulted their heart with unbelief. It was actually fear. It was, a, it was a kind of fear. Satan told them that they will perish. So I can tell you that if you continue in this path, you will send on the everlasting life. Actually, at times, what the enemy does is that he raises challenges along the way that makes people afraid. Maybe, God forbid, you know, the time we lose yes. Eben, some people lost faith. Yes. Hey! <laughs> so, So, you know, If I said that even allow people to have visions and all that time, they start dreaming that people are going to die. You just say, ah, Pastor, I had a dream that some other people died. <laughs> so, if you want to join in this part, eh, you must, you will close your eyes to many things. That is one thing that we don't take. You know, we like new, we like baby dedication. We can't handle losing people. That is where some people's hearts will fail. Uh, it happened to the Thessalonian church. So Paul had to keep encouraging them that Ebel is in heaven. Even though he died a... He was not even like a matter's death. He was shot. But he's in heaven. He's, ah, no. So some people's faith, that's where it ends. And it's fear for life. Now, why are they afraid? Number one, they are not sure that God can protect me. Some people, when anything bad happens to them, they're angry against the ministers. It's not against the ministers, it's against God. <laughs> what you are saying is that, God, you can't protect me. So what's the use of everlasting life? Where well, you cannot protect me. Why am I losing things? 
Meanwhile, it's also it's what you call trial of faith. Trial of faith, trial of faith comes in many areas. As an assembly, it comes in many areas. Trial of faith, at times we, we go through things that, eh, that we are believing God for something. And the thing does not answer faith. It, we are supposed to bear with it. So if you don't understand that, you get, you get offended. Most times it's even offense. So, the Hebrew church were going through trial of faith based on contradictions they were going through and that they were tired of. So, um, you are so great, what you are so But what I'm saying is actually perdition. You can't go back. You can't be the normal person. You don't understand. You can't, you can't have listened to so much of what like this. You don't say, I'm going back. So, where do you want to go? You can't go back because you have come. It is a walk that brought you where you are. The only people that can become normal people com- comfortably are people that never really journeyed. Physically, they never journeyed. So they can easily blend maybe with a normal church out there and will not feel like they have lost anything. It means that their eyes were not opened. That was actually messy for them. So even though they were part of the walk, but their eyes were never really, really opened. So they left. It wasn't even that they were offended. They left because they could not understand. So God just looks for a, a normal church for them. And they will blend normally without no problem. So they will not even feel like they are missing anything. Until maybe in the future, God can show them mercy again and bring the same light across their way. But there are some that grew, came into understanding. They now want to, to go back again. So when you even try, you, you try to sit down in a normal church, you find out that you are not connected. You can't connect. You know more than the pastor. That's why most people that don't do well in this kind of churches, they can't go into any church. They, they likely don't go, they will still stay in that church. Their body is there, but their soul is wandering. Their soul is wandering. You will not be able to go anywhere. Where will you go? I hope I'm not making you afraid. It's even good to you for you to be afraid, self. Because some people don't know that this kind of reality exists. So you just hang. Some people just hang. So add it out your hand, okay? That's why that moment's message last week, Tuesday, is salvation. Because your heart must be right. The, the, the most catastrophic thing that can happen to you is if Satan tampers with the, your heart posture towards the world. When the world no longer matters to you, when you no longer tremble at the world, then you are done, you are done with. So take it, brethren, lest there be an evil act of not being departed from the living God, okay? Let me just read. But exhort one another daily. Because it's a daily thing. Why is it called today? Today. So this transition ceasing. They are talking to lively stones. Today. To, you can see that they didn't put it together. Today. They are in transition. Least any of you be what? Add in. Prove the want. So you can see, add in not your heart. So what I need the heart is actually the sinfulness of sin nature. This, you know, just toughens the heart. So the heart is, the word is not mixing with faith because the heart is hardened. So, you know, the natural response to the word by the heart is faith. When the word is going on and the, the natural response of that, the heart connects in faith. So when the heart is not connecting in faith, something is wrong with the heart. You know that? Some, you know sometimes, some people you can even know, even from their facial expression. Maybe you, before, when, when the world is going, you are so excited. Your, your, your heart is igniting the world. If they are saw the heart, it can even show on your physical demeanor. A soul can be uninterested. Me, as a pastor, you know. Because you know that this person was not like this before. As I, some people, they even change seats from front to back. I'm telling you, you don't... Hey, 
Now, it's not like a front and back is anything, but for that person, yeah. it was a priority to be in the front. Uh, yeah. So maybe the person went through one challenge and all that, lost interest in the world. The person just dropped back. So after it's drawing back, can, can even affect, can be physical. So, you know, everybody wants to, oh no, we know some people would prefer to stay in the tents. They all start coming late to meetings. Thank you. Why do you think Paul says that? Do not forsake. Like what? Like some. Some of them already won wash your shima. Like the man of some. If you, if maybe years before they were not like that. Now, now how do I know that they are, something is failing? Have they become, have they entered into the Father's rest? They have not. So it means that something has happened. They weren't weary. So some people in Hebrew church, they were ready for second assembly. Meeting times began to reduce for no reason. Not for second as, uh, the assembly of ourselves together. Remember, he said we should exhort each other. Ah, what? Oh, eh, eh, damn it, oh. uh, But exhorting one another. And so much the more as the day approaches. This is the attitude to know. That the heart is still connecting with the world. It's still panting. So at times, you, know, you lose interest in meetings. Meeting is nothing to you anymore. Some, of, some people, why they are coming to meetings, it's not for the world. It's for, maybe the, some people, it's business. It's something, it's maybe they have a need with the brethren. So it, it may be something else. I'm telling you, only God. I say, I say God will expose our hearts. Amen. It's good though. It's good for you, for God to expose your heart though. I'm telling you, some people may be coming just for, let me just, let me just stick around. There's really nowhere to go. All my friends are in church. And I'm not ready to make new friends. So let me still tag along. Then you have mastered how to stay, but you are not around. You have mastered it. I mean, I even think that it's not, it's, it's more dangerous. At times it's even better to physically go. But you know, the more you stay, the more ardent you have to be to cope in that environment. Oh, you are not getting what I'm saying. You have to be, you have to toughen yourself. You have to keep toughening yourself. Um, let me just stop you. So when you, when you toughen yourself, uh, it means you have hardened your soul. So you have lost, you have despised the word. But you can still be here. So it says, for we are made partakers of Christ. If you hold the beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto what? The end. You can see. It's to the end. So, when the world does not mix with faith, uh, it does not produce understanding. So, even though you have the world, so you can have light. If light does not mix with faith, it does not produce what? Understanding. Can we say amen? God wants light to become life. Uh, it is when you come into life that your sins are being remitted. It is in the place of life that sins are remitted. It's when understanding begins to generate life that sins are remitted. So you have to stay with the word. You have to stay with the doctrine. It is as you stay that you enjoy remission. Can we begin to talk to the Lord? I'll continue tomorrow. Let us begin to talk to him. The Lord has spoken to us tonight. Let's talk to him. Stand to your feet and begin to talk to the Lord tonight. Let's talk to him. Lift up your hands and let's receive supply of the Spirit. I just feel I should stop at this point. Can you pray for your heart tonight? The Lord is doing a heart x-ray and a heart surgery. Can you pray for your heart tonight that the Lord will the Lord will circumcise your heart again and make that heart alive to his word.
that I had to begin to respond to light in a greater measure. That I had to respond to light in a greater measure. A rebellion from Popocora, Maka Libre, Niso, Sovenisa, Bara, Nick, the Bara, Nosta, a regalebro, Nisha, Shubani, from Papa, Ronica, Libro, Nisa, Faranita. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you receive grace right now? Receive grace upon your heart. Say, My heart will not fail. 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 My faith will grow stronger and stronger. Lord, help my heart. Help me, Lord, to love your word. Help me to esteem your word. Help me to value your word. Oh, Jesus, I open my heart before you. I ask for mercy. Oh, help me not to despise your word. Help me not to despise your teachings, especially this season. Help me, Jesus. Oh, help me, Father. Help me to be hungry for your word. Help me, Lord. Bless me with hunger. Bless me with passion for your word. Bless me, Lord Jesus, with hunger. You say, blessed are those that are hunger and thirst for righteousness. Help me to be hungry for righteousness. Help me to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I, I ask you to help my heart. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you for blessing us again tonight. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you for uh, using your servant to bless us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we thank the Lord? I don't know if the word touches you. Uh, can you just give thanks to Jesus? It is Jesus' extension of love and mercy. Anytime the word comes to us in this manner that reveals things in our hearts, that the word comes in a corrective manner, it is the Lord and it's mercy. It is mercy that extends to us. It's mercy that it shows to us. Thank you for showing me mercy today, Lord. Thank you for showing me mercy to adjust my heart, to adjust my heart towards your word. Thank you for showing me mercy. Thank you for showing me great love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate Daddy. Thank you, sir, for yielding to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for blessing us again tonight. Amen. I want, us to, I want to encourage us to pray. Uh, keep praying for yourself. Keep praying for your heart. It's a prayer that each one of us will do. We will have to do. Um, in this, in, it is in this season that hearts get hardened. Amen. You know, when you read the book of Acts, you don't see them talking about heart being hardened. Okay, so it is in the season where everlasting life, the Father's light is being taught. That is when hearts, you know, uh, that's when the possibility of hardiness, of uh, heart being hardened will, will, you know, that's what the things, unbelief, you know, and all those things are heart issues. So we need to pray and keep praying for ourselves, all of us, uh, including me, we have to be praying that the Lord will keep our hearts safe and our hearts will have enough faith that the word will mix with faith so that it can profit us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for the teachings. Um, can we quickly fight past the offering basket? Uh, tomorrow, just like Daddy said, the teaching continue. We'll have prayer and then teaching continue. I um, want to encourage us to be uh, around. And for those that probably you, have, you are coming from a very far distance, we encourage KCC um, to come together in the KCC units and stream. Amen. Not stream alone. Just look for a brother, two or three, and come together to stream so that you can encourage one another. Amen. Image and Glory Conference is 20 days from now. Um, the Lord will help us. There is a whole lot to still yet to be done. Our commitment, you know, as a family, uh, I'm talking about financial commitment now. Amen. It's very, very important. So every one of us, the Lord will grant us grace. The Lord will give us seed to sow. 
in the name of Jesus. A lot is yet to be done and we are trusting God that um, finances come in so that we'll be able to handle those things before the conference. Amen. And then we also want to encourage units. Um, let's not relax. All the things we have been taught and the training, let's not just assume that people have gotten it. Amen. Let's go over those training again. Let's go over those, um, all the trainings, you know, that we have gone through. Let's keep doing them. They say practice make perfect. Let's keep practicing it over and over again. Amen. And not slack so that by the time the, um, the conference comes, we'll be ready and we'll be fully uh, equipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me rise as we close the meeting. The Lord has helped us today greatly. Let's share the grace in one accord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.